Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had your tia, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have smash that right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to the following people. 1967 Kid, Puerto Rico. The Jabs, Dusty12, Hulk66, Savage Truth, the homie Angel Guerrero, Esquiel Rivera, and Gigi. Thank you. This episode right here is probably going to save these young kids' lives, man. <laughs> I, I need you guys to understand something right off the bat, right? right let's get into it. It's going to be a good one, right? Where I'm coming from, when I speak, when I share, I'm coming from, a, a, from, the, from the mindset of the warrior in the garden right? The warrior in the garden, not the warrior in the war, right? My war is over. My war is 110% over, right? My war in Iraq, my war in the California Department of Corrections after 16 years, I'm done. That's a wrap. Uh, your boy got tired. Your boy got exhausted. That was a wrap, right? So when I speak and I share, I'm coming from a place of positivity, right? I'm coming from a place of, of overall picture, right? I want you, let me, let me give you an example, right? Vietnam vets, Vietnam veterans. When, they, when the Americans were fighting the Vietnamese in the jungles, the trenches, the uh, tunnels, it was hell on earth. It was absolutely hell on earth. They were killing each other, maiming each other, torturing each other. How about now you can, you're able to turn on the, uh, the History Channel and you're able to see American veterans giving um, tours, tours, meeting their enemies. Old men, two old men, two old enemies meeting on that battlefield, having conversations, right? <laughs> Those are two separate, same people, right? Same exact people. Two separate encounters, right? Two separate encounters. You guys got to understand that. Uh, World War II. When you have all these World War II D-Day veterans going back to Normandy. Back to those beaches that they stormed and got annihilated by the... Uh, Germans in the in the pillboxes, the bunkers, right? And then they, they fought, 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 and eventually took it. They're able to go back, right? <laughs> That's where I'm coming from, okay? You don't want to see me in the war. You don't want to see me in the war, all right? People have. Many people have. A lot of my viewers have. Right? That is a whole nother animal. So if you think you're brand new... Coming from the academy, uh, graduating from the academy today, everything is going to be kumbaya. The homie Hector Bravo on, on YouTube said, everybody's cool, everybody's cool. Wrong. Listen to what I just told you these last two minutes, right? It is prison. Prison is violent. There is violent offenders in there, right? Understand this. Um, This is kind of a good topic too, because when I, I learned a lot at Sentinella, I saw a lot in Sentinella, I participated a lot in Sentinella, right? When I go over to Donovan, it, it, RJD, it was a whole nother animal. We, in, in Sentinella, we would have never, ever, ever allowed an inmate to walk behind us, to walk God, let alone within an arm's reach behind us. Why? Because they've, we've been stabbed before. We've been sliced before. It happens. It 100% happens, right? When I got to Donovan, man, everything was like, hey, buddy, what's up, John? Hey, Bill. Maybe not to that extreme, but pretty close, right? I would tell the cops, hey, don't let these dudes walk behind you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you, Sarge. Next thing you know, the freaking porter. Imagine the officer's podium, right? 
the officer's podium, while at Donovan, they have a chair back here for like the, for like the inmate porter or clerk, for somebody to just kick back right there. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? It was not, it, two plus two was not equaling five in Hector's head. It was just my, it was, I was malfunctioning, right? I'm like, hey, nah, 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 I'm not, I'm cool with this, right? Like, one, I told you, don't let an enemy walk behind your back. Second, they let the inmate walk behind their back. I don't know. I don't know what they haven't seen. I don't know what they haven't done. I don't know, right? But this is the message. Prison is still prison, right? Tomorrow is going to be prison. At the end of the day, it's going to be prison. We talk about, on this channel, convicts and inmates. When it is go time, everybody's going, right? If they have to follow that umbrella, if everybody's going, right? <laughs> you guys have to understand where I'm coming from. Please, right? Um, I've seen a lot in my career. I've seen a lot. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, let's go down the list real quick. Um, Charlie Yard, Sentinella, level four. An officer around my time frame. We were new. Probably 2008, 2009. Charlie 2 or Charlie 3. Big ass white inmate. Big white inmate. GP level 4. I don't know if I mentioned that. Walks up from the podium. Starts stabbing the dude behind the neck. Bam, bam, bam. Dude was like my, like my class time frame. Right? So this is like my generation. This isn't like an old school OG prison guard story that I'm hearing from from the dudes that opened it up in 93, this is happening, right? Big old white boy, after he's done stabbing the cop, he prones out, right? Puts his hands behind his back. Like, I'm not going to say that wasn't cool, but the whole thing wasn't cool, right? People shouldn't be getting stabbed up about the neck. So, yeah, that happened, right? Uh, I wanted to make a whole episode on this. And I wasn't there for this incident, but we had a free staff plumber in, in behind Charlie Voke at Sentinella. And the Samoans went to town on this dude's face with razor blades. They, they sliced this dude's up face like, it, from what I heard from people that were there, this dude's face was hanging off, hanging off, right? He was crawling on his hands and knees. His face was off, Right? That was that one. My first staff assault was on the minimum yard. Echo. It, at Sentinel, it's called Echo, Echo Yard. That was the first staff assault that I got involved in. Right? And that happened. That one happened. It was me and another partner. And that partner is no longer alive. God bless his soul. The dude was solid day in. That started over... Um. You know, you, you got to seat the inmates down in the chair, in the chow hall, right? And there's limited staff out there. And you say, next row. The row gets up. When they're done eating, they put their trays away and they go. I was, yeah, I was young, but I was still uh, reasonable. Give people reasonable enough time to eat, whatever. Nothing extra, nothing short. I'm not giving them extra. I'm not shorting them time. Normal time. Well, this little southerner, Sureño, skinny dude too. Young and skinny. Like, he didn't, he, he, he didn't want to get, he did not get up. Everybody else at his table got up. I look, that caught my attention. Next row. He didn't get up. I go, hey dude, get up. Nah, I'm eating. <laughs> right? Now I'm young. You want to talk about the war? This is the war, right? Um... Everybody, now everybody in the child hall is looking. Everybody's looking, right? My partner having enough experience can, 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 can hear and what's going on inside, even though he's outside. I said, get up. Nah. My partner tells him, comes in. We tell that dude, get up, go outside, right? As soon as this dude walks, I'm on his, I'm on his heels. I'm on his heels. I hear the other inmates say, oh, 
it's all bad for the little, it's all bad, it's gonna be all bad for the homie. Something like that, like, oh, it's game off, it's something, he, they said something like that. As soon as they, that inmate got on the wall, he headbutts my partner. Boom! That inmate took an L that day. 100% took an L, should never have, that should never have even transpired, right? But you gotta understand the environment. I don't even want to be telling these stories, man. This was all behind me. This was all the past, right? You guys are making me dig up skeletons in my closet. But it's the truth, right? If it's going to save people's lives, that so be it, right? Man. Uh, and we're lucky. We are lucky we didn't get jumped. When we were done, we looked back. There was a line, a line of sureños, a freaking skirmish line. I was new, looking at us, right? My partner gets up, puts his baton out, he's like, get down. I was, man, that, that scared me. That part scared me when I look back and I seen a wall of sureños. They, thank God they got down. They didn't have to get down. In fact, they probably should have rushed us, right? They, they should have rushed us, no doubt, right? So, yeah, uh, that was like, I just gave you like three small examples in a short period of time. The numbers of riots that I've been involved in. Uh, attempted murders. Woo, let's talk about attempted murders on peace officers. How many have you been involved in, Hector? One too many. One too many. Don't like them, right? So, I t there's a whole video. Go back if you have to. An inmate, I was a brand new sergeant at Donovan. The inmate tied a weapon to his hand, stabbed the cop over and over again. The inmate was high on meth for five days. Anybody who's ever been on meth, hopefully nobody has, knows that you get like that extra strength, right? That was a fiasco, right? And when I say fiasco, I'm not going to go. I absolutely refuse to go into detail with how we quelled problems of inmates attempting to murder officers. I'm not going to do it. It got stopped. For sure it got stopped. 100% it got stopped. Yep. So, yeah, understand what you're getting into. I'm lucky. I'm lucky because I let, well, f am I really lucky? I, I gave up the money. To me, it wasn't, it, it, overall, at the end, it wasn't about the money, especially with the rules, the the, re the silly, unethical f from the administration, right? Like the, uh, I I've explained this. Um, yeah, lace up your boots. Make sure you shave your face. I hear they're cracking down on beards. Uh, walk in pairs, you know, I, I used to be, I, when I used to get schooled as a youngster, it was, uh, hey Hector, the level fours are here, level four program, um, officers walk in pairs, they walk in pairs when they walk across the yard, when they're in the building, and when I got to Donovan, yeah, I would tell the cops walk in pairs, but then things got so distorted with with the level four overrides, that inmate that tied a weapon to his hand and stabbed the officer, he was a level four inmate on an override on a level three yard, right? So you guys don't even know about overrides yet and the craziness that it, it's, you're going to be put in a position of disadvantage, right? It's not going to be a fair war. It's not going to be a cool war. I don't even think there is such a thing as a cool war, right? Like, Ain't gonna happen, right? This isn't McDonald's. They, this isn't like Toys R Us. This is a California prison system, right? Man, whoo. The warrior in the war, right? You guys ever need anything? I'm still around. I'm here. This is the voice, right? Um, the message for today is 
the message for today, this is, this is going to be a personal message, right? I fought in the Iraq war. I fought against the Iraqi, the insurgents, right? I got out, right? Let's say another war kicks off with Iraq. It would not be in my best interest to tell those soldiers, hey, everything's going to be cool over there. Don't trip. That's not the truth. The truth is your friends are going to die. You're possibly going to die. You're going to kill people. Your innocent people are going to die. That's the truth. Keep pushing forward.